Hello, my fellow gamers. Welcome, welcome back to the game here. Welcome back to Devil Prediction 2. I keep wanting to say Yakuza like a dragon just because I did 100 episodes on it. Uh, last time we fought a boss, Galena. It was a good time. We're told to go back to the hotel, which I feel like is just going to be an end of chapter cutscene. Oh, that's my thought. Can we talk to him? Uh... Zach, here's another perfect symbol of the human condition. Hunting trophies. What? And it's a buffalo hunting trophy. Now that's a surprise. There isn't any of those here. I've seen several trophies made out of human skin, but never a buffalo's. Wait, what? Looking at him brings out this strange feeling from within me. Yes, the very same feeling I got when watching a certain film from 1984, directed by Peter Hyams. What the freak? 2010. The last scene in that film filled me with such a sublime, majestic feeling. It was filled with everything that was missing from the finale of 2001, A Space Odyssey. Just talking about it makes me want to watch it again. Let's watch it once we get home. Promise, Zach. I thought we were going to talk to Hoonigan again, but guess not. Dang, I'm still kind of hurt. Eh. Poor Tom. Zach, let's go over our progress. We've okay. got a complicated case on our hands this time, especially as far as the Clarkson's relationships go. Fair. But in a way, it's also a simple one. Understanding them on a deeper level is the most efficient way to uncover the truth behind all this. That's the one thing I'm sure of. Okay. Makes sense to me. Oh, freak! Zach, let's start with the people who were closest to the victim. Lise Clarkson, the victim, is the granddaughter of the current head of the Clarkson family. Her mother is Galena, an ex-actress, and Lise clearly inherited her beauty. Except for her eyes, that is. Lise's eye color matches that of her father's. Now, do you remember who Lise Clarkson's father is? It's Danny. Freak, we had to do this. That's right. Lisa's father is Danny Clarkson. His real name is Daniel E. Clarkson. He's from Florida and used to be the CEO of a talent agency. How do we know this? Danny struck the heart of Galena and successfully became a member of the esteemed Clarkson family. Despite being the son-in-law, he acts like he was born a Clarkson, but he's still just the son-in-law. Fair. Next comes what happened to Lise. According to Alexis, Lee said that the man was as tall as an oak tree. I believe that's the same 10 foot tall giant who made the fingerprints we found in the cold storage warehouse. This giant though. Now what did this man do to Lise prior to her murder? Stop. Yes, that's it, Zach. The man as tall as an oak tree followed Lise around and watched her. Despite his towering stature, he must have been rather shy. Or perhaps he was merely biding his time and planned to kidnap her from the very start. If that's the case, there should have been some evidence left at the scene of the crime. Hmm. Zach, we're still missing some puzzle pieces. Yeah? Speaking of the scene of the crime, I did some profiling in the plantation's control room. Yep. The truth it revealed to us was nauseating and horrific. But we need to touch upon it if we wish to proceed. Isn't that right, Zach? Who actually murdered Lise Clarkson? Well, as we know, it is Galena. Yes, that's right. Lise's own mother killed her while she was dreaming about some bizarre new world. She's not missing. She's in the police office. That's this wrong. This is by far the vilest and ugliest crime we've ever seen. I kind of doubt that. The fact that Galena set up her daughter's body at an altar makes this case even more complicated. Remember, not a single sacrificial human murder has ever been proven and documented in all of American history. Wait, what? The real world is far more complex than what we see in films and video games. Fourth wall. And sacrificing a human life for something else is no easy task. In conclusion, Zach, through our investigation, we found one character who sticks out more than anyone else. You know exactly who I'm thinking about, don't you? Professor we'll need Art. to have a word with her in the near future. Oh, I'm actually right. Who's the stylish woman we saw during the profiling? 
Uh, I'm gonna go Professor R. Professor R. We haven't met her yet, but she's deeply intertwined with this case. Let's wait for the skeletal gentleman to guide us to her with an oracle. Or well, we Zach, can just what do, do you it. think? Isn't the Deep South something? Why is deep capitalized? The people here are just as warm as the weather, and the food is to die for. Mm, might be nice to move down here after I retire. Huh. What, still too early to talk about that? You may be right. After all, this case has only just begun. Ooh, a whole ten dollars. We've already completed 21 missions of this game. I would thump. Oh, God bless it. Okay, that was quick. Where are we? Galena can't be the killer. They're making all this shit up. Alligator? If what you say is true, Daniel, how do you plan to prove it? It's nearly been a century since the Clarksons first took control of Lucari. One hundred years. I always thought my legacy would live on for two, no, three hundred at least. I'm gonna find the real killer and beat the living dog shit out of him. Yet it looks to me like times have changed. We ain't in the good old days no more. You understand me, boy. Yes, sir. I'm right there with you, Paul. I'm gonna continue what you started, sir, and make the Clarkson family strong again. But first, I need to find whoever really killed Lise and pass their fucking brains in. I saw this coming. What? Ever since the day Lenny left home, the town of Lucare has been cursed. We can't stop what's happening now. It's too late. It's beyond me. No. It's beyond the mind of anyone who comes from the olden days. You understand me now, boy? Yes, sir. Believe me, I do. I'll kill him. Uh. Leave everything to me, Paul. Hmm. Are you serious about this? Yes, sir. Right hand of God. Look right in my eyes. I ain't lying. I'm serious. I just need you to lend me some troops, sir. We need retribution right now. That's the job I've been given, and I intend to do it. Well then, let me ask you one more time. Are you serious about this? Yeah. Hell yeah. I'm a Clarkson, and all Clarksons have a job to do. Isn't that what we always say? Mm-hmm. Then I'll need an arm. Yeah. What? Well now. You want to use my troops, I'm going to need to know whether or not you're really serious about this. Just one arm. Slide it on through that wire there, and it'll take care of it for you. What? Paul, I mean, you're joking, right? Daniel, have I ever told you a single joke? What? Uh, no, but... If you want to become a real Clarkson, <laughs> then you done got yourself a job to do. Wait, Paul, I, I get it now. You, you, you want me to stick it in and pull it out at the last minute, right? You, you, you want to see if I got guts or not, but there, there's going to be another way. You, you can't be serious, sir. Hey! Hey, knock it off, you assholes! Let me go! He's just joking with me! 
Let me go, goddammit! Oh, please, sir, don't do this! Just tell me this is a joke, please! I am a Clarkson. And no matter how our fortune falls, all Clarksons have a job to do. But... That be the law of this land. What? Bad music animations. I would definitely say that. But why is he in his underwear? Worst animations ever for music. Actually, the saxophones. Okay, he's not even with his fingers anymore. The beginning looked really good. Gave me hope. Oh, free. I got an S rank? Pains? Huh? I want one of the older ones. Okay. Yo. You can hear me, right? I'll be with you soon. Wait, I'm... I'm not sad. I'm sad. Honestly, I can't wait. It's all I think about lately. I mean, we'll be together again. We'll get to discuss movies and food again. Everyone around here has bad taste. Yeah. They don't, they don't understand, understand things the way we do. It's a, it's a shitty, shitty world filled with shitty people. Dang, Zach oh, Bertle. That, that reminds, reminds me. me. There, there are, are movie, movie theaters, theaters and restaurants, restaurants over there, right? right? As, soon as soon as I get, I get there, there, let's, let's go, go grab some peanut, peanut butter hamburgers and yogurt and smoothies. What? I'm so, so excited, excited, York. What? Please. There she Yuck. is. Don't rush me. You just need to wait a bit longer. I still have one job left to do. I need to finish it. I have to. Or else I'd never be able to face you. Just, just give me a little more time. Okay. So, Lise's mother, Galena Clarkson, confessed to murdering Lise. But then immediately afterwards, she went insane. So you had no choice but to detain her. What a terribly convenient story. You were the first person to find the suspect hiding at a farm on the edge of town. And you even got her to confess to the crime, right then and there. Did anyone else get a chance to hear Galena's confession? Only us. How did you even find that shack in the first place? Skeletal gentleman. Metaphysical offender profiling. Meta what? Should I know this word? 
metaphysical offender profiling. The term appears six times in the Lucare report and 14 times in the 2010 Greenvale report. As long as you're solving cases, the people in charge don't really care what sort of words you use. But we're different. You utilized a highly abnormal method to instantly hone in on a suspect. Then you did it again and again. And every time you used it, one term kept appearing in your files. Metaphysical offender profiling. Mr. Morgan, would you mind explaining to us what this term means? We could try. But no matter what words we used, you'd never be able to understand. You see, it doesn't pertain to this side. Come, my fairy. Stop hiding back there and give them the explanation they so desire. <laughs> what? You're too shy? <laughs> Mr. Morgan? Mr. Morgan! Come on out. Don't... Oh, he was talking still. Is that all you have to say? Don't underestimate me, Morgan. I know you and the Clarkson share a deeper connection. Do we? Much deeper than how it appears on the surface. I need to shake him with something else that's directly connected to the Clarksons. I'm gonna jog his memory by force. Those letters look very old. Oh! The postmark suggests they were sent out from Louisiana. And I suspect that dragonfly mark belongs to the Clarkson family. <clears throat> Maybe. So what if it does? A stalker has been harassing Patricia Clarkson for several years now. Did you know about this? I have no idea who she is. Constant silent phone calls, unmarked letters. She also spotted a suspicious figure lurking near her mansion several times. And just last week, her employees spotted a strange figure lurking in the vicinity. The day someone else coincidentally used your alias and traveled to Louisiana. That's very intriguing. Aligned symbolism. Lise Clarkson also reported being harassed by a stalker just before she was murdered. You're aware of this, correct? Because I didn't find any mention of this in your report. No direct connection to the case. That's what we must have thought. The visionary lies to himself, the liar only to others. Which are you? That's enough for now. This all has nothing to do with the case. Besides, there's no evidence that proves those letters are from her. Isn't that right, my fairy? <laughs> I mean, it would have to be the frozen body. Mr. Morgan. According to you, at the beginning of this case, the victim's body was being stored in the warehouse on purpose. Is that the truth? They really put her body there alongside food and other perishables? It's in the report. No. The report only says it was stored using the most effective and shockingly inhuman method possible. If you can think of a better phrase, we're all ears. The report isn't wrong, you know. In fact, that might actually be the most accurate way of describing it. It's precise, and it's also kind of poetic, you know? Wow, Simon. We never would have taken you for a poet. <laughs> <coughs> right? You two think this is a joke? Yes. Lise Clarkson's body was discovered in that cold storage warehouse. After 14 long years. If you'd only done a proper investigation, we probably would have found her much sooner. Oh. That poor girl. We still regret the fact that we never got to meet her. We're sorry. From the bottoms of our hearts. I only hope it didn't happen that way by design. Will you comfort me? 
<sighs> Thank you, my fairy. <laughs> so I didn't say dark laughter. I knew it wouldn't go that easily. Maybe I should try asking my questions in a different way. I could use Agent Jones here. Agent Jones! Are you paying attention? Or do you intend to waste Mr. Morgan's precious time? Uh, no. Sorry. I'm just a little tired. I'm listening. I'm listening. Take your hand out of your pocket. Didn't they teach you any manners at Quantico? Oh, uh, right. Guess they slipped my mind. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually kind of nervous. I'm not used to this sort of thing. Data analysis is my specialty, you know. I, uh, I'm sure I'd be able to calm down a bit if I had some pizza, though. Thank you, Pizza Jones. <laughs> <laughs> There's a dark laughter. Uh, the FBI needs to do something about their lack of personnel. I'll have to ask the questions myself. But how should I start? Maybe I should look back over the files and calmly reassess the situation. Well, After you arrested Galena Clarkson with the Clarksons, at least that's what it says in the report. What exactly happened there? Just a simple run-in, that's all. Nothing but a single phenomenon. Phenomenon. Chasing hollow instances like that won't lead you closer to the truth. Truth doesn't work like that. A hollow phenomenon. Which resulted in a mountain of corpses. <laughs> oh, Belle. We think we finally understand what you're trying to say. But don't be so voracious. That word makes me laugh, sorry. <sighs> How about another cup of coffee? We've still got a long way to go, you know. <laughs> <coughs> Yes. It's coarsely ground, so there should only be four teaspoons per cup. No more, no less. Next, the coffee travels from the funnel to the siphon. Simon, normally you only do surveillance in order to gather data, correct? Hiding microphones and cameras, sifting through garbage, wiretapping, shadowing, tracing credit card histories... You'll do whatever it takes to gather data in order to prevent crimes. That's how the FBI works. Uh, well, yeah, you're right. No reason in hiding it now, I guess. <laughs> Why do you ask? Our Southern Belle has adopted a very peculiar M.O. Wait, what? It's almost like she has a special power just like us. Huh. <laughs> You've been watching us this entire time, haven't you, Belle? From that window. I don't need to answer that question. You came here on New Year's Eve, then spent 49 hours watching us until you returned to your hotel room last night. You observed us the entire time without sleep or rest, and you only ate once some pizza delivered by Simon. Aside from that, you never drank any water or relieved yourself. You simply sat there and continued to watch us. You have visions, too, don't you? You came here solely to hear us talk, didn't you? But then... Why bother watching us for over two days beforehand? You didn't come to talk with us. You came because you wanted to see this apartment with your own eyes. And 
because you're already convinced of something. Isn't that right? He who fights with monsters should see to it that he himself does not become a monster. Uh-oh. And if you gaze long into an abyss, the abyss also gazes into you. But I... Oh. Coffee. Yeah. Perfectly Thank you, around. my fairy. If you hadn't been paying attention, this coffee would have all gone to waste. The pus in our brains. It really has a way of interfering with our lives. Huh? Didn't remember. That is bizarre. What the Christ? This is friggin' delicious! I thought I was gonna shit myself for a second there. Come on, Aaliyah, take a sip. Trust me. I'm not exaggerating here. I... I don't believe it. It's better than any coffee I've ever tasted. Of course it is. Coffee is a sacred drink. <laughs> Coffee saved us. If not for its oracle, we would be on the other side right now. So I never forget to pay my respects to coffee. Especially at critical moments like this. Big black cumulonimbus clouds are in the sky. And that sound. Thundersnow is coming. Ooh. It's got his hands in his pockets again. Come on, don't glare at me like that, Aaliyah. I told you, I'm out of my element here, remember? This isn't the time or the place. Well, yeah, I know. I'm just really nervous. I mean, Morgan's a legend. And now he's right in front of us, and things are all tense. I'm sure it'd give any normal agent a stomachache. Incidentally, Simon, why did you decide to stop working out in the field? Uh, don't ask. It's a long story. I don't mind. We have lots of time, don't we? I could even make you another cup of coffee, if you like. <sighs> uh, fine then. I'll try to make it brief. See... I used to work out in the field, even had my own partner, but we had a little rivalry that sort of ruined our relationship. It was over a woman, of course. You know how it goes. We fell in love with the same girl, at the same workplace, too. Then one day, the three of us went to go do a stakeout at a restaurant over in East Boston. I pretended to be a customer while my partner waited in the car, and she waited in the building across the way. Well, it only took a few minutes for my partner and I to lose our heads. We started engaging in this dumb contest to see who could impress her more. Things were looking bad, and I knew I was gonna lose. Then, something happened. Right in front of me, a customer starts choking on something. Her face was pale, froth at the mouth, the whole nine yards. I got up at once, but my partner stopped me. Didn't want us to blow our cover, so what did I do? I ignored him and helped the guy anyway. I couldn't stand by and watch that. I couldn't help myself. Next thing I knew, I was a hero. The guy survived, the restaurant thanked me, and I'd even managed to win the heart of you-know-who. It felt pretty good, you know? One-upping my partner right in front of his very eyes. But that was the beginning of the end. A few days later, she and I went to go get some bubble tea at a cafe in Brookline. I do not like bubble tea, by the way. And a man comes up to me and said, I'm here to thank you on behalf of the person you saved in that restaurant. Feeling a bit cocky, I said, All in a day's work, my good man, and tried to brush him away. But he held out an envelope to me and said, My client broke three ribs thanks to the unnecessary Heimlich maneuver you administered to him. He wants you to ensure that he'll be able to get the proper treatment. I thought I'd saved someone. 
But all I ended up doing is wasting a lot of my precious time wrapped up in an astronomically stupid court case. Yeah. It also blew our cover, so our target found out about us. In the end, I was taken out of the field and banished to a meaningless job that anyone with half a brain could do. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean it like that. Anyway, uh, well, that's what happened. Of course, I also lost the love of my life and went back to being a lonesome loser. Same. And that's Wait. why I hate being out in the field. Oh, come on! I tell you all that and you're not even gonna say anything? That was... long, Simon. Hey, <laughs> I warned you! I told you it'd be long! Oh. Why would an agent as skilled as you close the Lee Clarkson case without locating her body? Good question. Maybe we just weren't as skilled as you think back then. Isn't that right, my fairy? And then again, the fairy didn't exist then. You reported the body as being stolen. Was that truly the case? Meaning? Meaning there's a possibility that the body wasn't stolen, but purposefully moved instead. I feel like stolen it would still imply here. Maybe someone ordered someone else to get rid of the body. Or even store it in a specific place. Which is stealing. But who? And for what purpose? In order to use the body for something else. I don't want to think about that. You never considered that? Perhaps there's some connection between the frozen body and the fact that Saint Rouge is still being produced. Hey, Aaliyah? How about explaining yourself clearly so that even I can follow along? Someone extracted the ingredients to Saint Rouge from Lise Clarkson's body. That's what you're trying to say, isn't it, Belle? So that they could go on producing the inimitable drug without Professor R. What? Drug addiction destroys people, physically and mentally. That's not why he's asking what to, he's asking how. It makes them capable of doing anything just so they can get their hands on a fix. Alright, I'm gonna pause right here. Daily Production 1 spoil spoiler. Saint Rouge is literally made of growing a plant through a wo woman's womb. That's how... That's why the fairy exists. That's how this all started. Abusing a corpse? That's nothing to an addict. And with your dependency, I suspect you might know just what that's like. Oh, gosh. Maybe we do. If you threaten to take this away from us, I might have to kill you both right here. And steal... All your hundred dollar bills. What? Oh, spine tingling. Scary stuff, isn't it, my fairy? <laughs> <laughs> you, you sure got a twisted sense of humor there, Morgan. <laughs> Do you hear that thunder? It's probably gonna snow soon. We're in Massachusetts. That's the norm for this time of year. Well, I'm not used to the cold. If possible, I'd like to finish this up before we get stuck in a snowstorm. Agent Jones, after we're done here, I... Agent Jones, is something the matter? Snap out of it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I know, I know. Do you? Then stop daydreaming. Okay, okay. I just... You just what? You're afraid of this thunder, aren't you? I just... Uh... My stomach's been letting some thunder loose, too. Thunder? The, uh... That coffee oh. was just so good, it, uh... It what? We don't have all day here. The coffee was just so good, it, uh... <laughs> 
summoned forth a massive tsunami from within me. Excuse me? What is wrong with you? He gotta poop, ma'am. Now is really not the time for this. Right door at the end of the hallway. Thanks, pal. Ooh, hold on. You can make it. We can do this. It's not very far. <laughs> We promise you, we did not put laxatives in the coffee. Coffee is a sacred drink, remember? Ugh. Motherfucker. Whoa! <laughs> There's no doubt that the report omitted information linking Morgan to the Clarksons. I need to get him to confess. Oh, yeah. That reminds me. There's a secret weapon in Agent Jones's briefcase. So it's an Mr. Morgan, I heard that you were always a smoker. Did you ever wonder if that was the reason you contracted your illness? What does that have to do with this case? Nothing. I'm just personally curious about it. Sometimes, people die in car accidents, regardless of how well they take care of their health. That sounds familiar. Other times, they slip on their bathroom floors and crack open their heads. <laughs> Isn't that right, my fairy? I'm not concerned with statistics. I'm just curious about you, right here, right now. We switched over from nicotine to this. It's less addictive. That's one step in the right direction, isn't it? Perhaps. If we're talking about withdrawal symptoms or physical dependencies. But it still seems like you're smoking too much at once. Honestly, it looks to me like you have a mental dependency. <laughs> Maybe. But so what if we do? Surely you know about gateway drugs, oh yes? Oh my gosh. When a person starts to use one drug, it becomes much easier for them to branch out and try other drugs as well. It's not a thing. The first drug acts as the gateway that leads them to stronger substances. Oh. Are you trying to say that's going to happen to us? No. I'm simply saying there's a possibility. All right, let's see what this almighty secret weapon is. Have you ever seen this before? And please, don't say no. Yes. Saint Rouge, the drug we once chased. What about it? Saint Rouge is still circulating. It's changed shape and its composition is slightly different now. But it's still very much alive. But only in a very limited part of Louisiana. You aren't surprised? Did you somehow know this would happen? Copies of another drug being circulated isn't exactly a rare case. But Saint Rouge is special. And we know it. The inimitable Enigma Powder. The origin. It has many names, and no one was ever able to copy it. We've also been trying to figure out what it's made from ever since it appeared. But it's impossible to analyze. After all, it appears to be made from common ingredients that can be found anywhere. But if you try to use those ingredients, all you'll end up with is a mundane hallucinogen like DMT. If you're lucky. No. Saint Rouge requires a special recipe. The original recipe. Which someone's been guarding this entire time. Someone who survived the incident in Le Carré. Wait, the letters again? Immediately after they found Lisa's body, I went to go see Patricia. In order to interrogate her, of course. So you told us. But I was unable to meet with her. She refused to speak with you, didn't she? That's so like her. No, she didn't get the chance to. You see, she's gone missing. What? Oh, that got his interest. To Keep put up. it more accurately, no one's seen her since the afternoon of the 28th. 
According to her employees, she shut herself up in her room for several months before she disappeared. But since that sort of thing happened often, they didn't think anything of it. On the morning of New Year's Eve, they noticed her window was open, and when they went up to check on her, she was gone. But no one knows how long her window had been open for. This is just my hypothesis, but on December 28th, a strange man visited Le Carre and was spotted near her mansion. That man must have found some way to lure Patricia into his car, the 89 Cadillac that he bought used. Then, the two of them drove north to Trenton where they boarded a train to Boston. They would have arrived here around midnight on the 29th, or perhaps early morning on the 30th. I believe this man is the same Billy Bishop whose name was previously recorded by the airline. So, what do you think of my guess? I'd love to hear your opinion as a former FBI special agent. Now we get it. We aren't persons of interest. We're the suspects. But what about our alibi? What alibi? I've had enough of your bullshit. You expect me to believe you haven't taken a single step out of this room? That Agent Jones is your witness? Surveillance cameras can easily be tampered with. Especially by someone like you, who knows all about how the FBI works. You're possessed by death. Go and take a look at your own face in the mirror. You look like the Grim Reaper. After you visited both Lucare and Greenvale, you left a mountain of corpses in your wake. You can make all the excuses you want. I'm immune to them. Right here, right now, I want to know everything. You tell me the truth. Yes! You're good, Bill. Damn good. <laughs> You're brimming with potential. Don't you think she's the perfect partner for our last dance? What do you say, my fairy? Don't you agree? She's good. So good. <sighs> what do you want to know? We've got nothing to hide. Go on. Question us. This is how it's got to be. Doesn't this remind you of something? You know what I mean, my fairy? <laughs>